Hello and welcome to this video on the squid sample sample or sample as I may refer to it in this video. Let's check out some of what's to come before we get into it. Now the squid salon pull from ALM Busy Circuits is an eight channel, five different output sampler. This can play back audio or CV samples, mangle them, mix them together, or record audio and CV samples on the fly. I'll do a quick guide through the panel and some of the features here before we get into it more specifically. And this is quite a long video to go through all the power of the unit, but right up front, I just wanted to say this has been really simple and really quick to use and to learn and just to get things going. Hitting USB, we come into being able to save and load our banks and that loads this into the RAM. And at this point I'll say, because there's so much great default sample content on this little USB stick that we get with the module. I've done lots of patches where I don't talk and just make beats and sounds and textures and CV modulate my system from the squid salon pull throughout the video. They're just dotted in between the sections of the video. Once we have some sounds loaded into RAM, we can select the channel, trigger that channel. Of course, trigger them from their inputs. We've got control, so bit rate, sample rate, speed, envelope, level. If we wanted to say CV assigned to that decay, we just hit assign and it's there. We can offset and attenuate CV2. Recording is as simple as hitting recording. It's armed, plug and input, anything from line to hot modular levels. We can trigger the sampling. We actually get a trigger out when sampling is active. So we can live on the fly in time sample audio or CV2. We can reverse samples, loop samples, change start and end and loop cue points. And the output section gives us an AC coupled audio based mix output and paired outputs for one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, which are DC coupled. So these can play back CV. Channel six, seven and eight have pitch control on the panel and they track volt per octave. But again, this has just been really simple to use. So skip around the video as you see fit grab a drink, watch the whole thing start to end, leave a comment with any questions of course, and let's dive in. It's fair to say the Squid Salala Lample is a great drum machine, sample bass drum player, loads of drums in the bank, it's of course a focus of the machine, although it's capable of way more than that. But let's just get started with getting some drums going. We could simply plug in the mix output, check out some sounds, load them up, and I can trigger these sounds by pushing the encoder, hitting channel to cycle through the channels, or just cycling through. And that's my bank. But I'm gonna take the individual outs, build up a nice stereo drum mix. So here's some triggers into the samples, different outputs into my mixer to get some stereo sounds. Now with this beat playing, just in terms of getting started, you can start to load through different banks of sounds. Hit in USB, scroll to a bank, and we can just live load. So 
So let's check out the channel parameters and what we can do to these channels. Going into quality first, and this is just a simple 909 Hi-Hat. Other things are playing, but they're muted out for now. Bitrate. Sample rate. And we can assign CV to all of these as well. Speed. Which is tape or vinyl, like just speed and pitch all connected together. Nicely wide ranging. Going into envelope, we have level. Fairly self explanatory. An actual setting of 50 is kind of unity level, but these are back down to 30 just so that that mix output just gives you a little bit of headroom. You can, also, of course, bring that up if you need to. Decaying, when it's at 99, has no effect. It just plays back the sample, either as a one shot or just infinitely looping. Even if I take this out, this is now looping. We'll come to looping in a second. Going back to decay, we can start to bring that decay in. And of course, on longer samples, that decay is going to have more of an effect through the whole range. This is pretty short anyway. Bringing decay back up full. Let's look at loop. We can have normal playback, looping, or forwards and backwards looping. Let's stick with forwards and backwards looping and actually remove the trigger. We can set a crossfade. which can introduce a bit of a click at times. It's sometimes needed, it's sometimes not. In this case, it's not. We've then got our cue points for the sample. You could have various cue points set up or longer samples that you move through with these cues. Start point. End point. And also a loop point. So it's nice if I trigger this again. Get a tighter end point. Then change the loop point. That little glitch kind of sound in there, the loop point is actually kind of further into the sample. It's not looping the whole thing, although the trigger is starting right from the start. Just turn loop off. You can simply reverse it. So let's explore these channel parameters again, this time looking at the quantizer, the vault per octave that we get on channels six, seven, and eight, and using the CS80 bank, bank 59, if you're curious on the default sounds. We just trigger the sound and handle it. We get the icon to tell us that little tuning fork icon that we're in tune with the original sample. Because these have the vault per octave pitch. And I'm just triggering that by pushing the encoder. Now I want to set this to loop, I don't have to keep pushing it, so I'm going to hit loop. Let's just loop forward. And I'm going to set the end point a little bit near the start on the cues. That'll do for now. So again, quality, bit rate. All assignable by CV, sample rate. And then quantization, which means that when I'm just randomly moving this around, no means it's off. 12 means chromatic, so I'll try and slowly turn this chromatically, moving in semitones. Handy for keeping things in tune. And then OT is octave. 
So it not only quantizes the knob, but the actual vault proactive input as well. So if you want to mute any of the channels, it's as simple as holding function and hitting envelope. I may have already been doing it through the video, but I wanted a specific point in that timing index. So if you were wondering about muting, you could just click it and come through. The mute will stay active as we scan through. I have a dirty little noisy beat in the background. Super simple. Function, envelope to mute, same again to unmute. So here's bank 84, you can see that when we hit USB, and I'm going to play around with some CV, playing back and mangling CV. And these grouped pairings of outputs, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, are DC coupled, we can output CV through them. The mix out, however, is AC coupled, so while you will get some CV-like behaviour out of it, it's not going to be what's expected. CV coming out of channel 1 into the scope so we can see it. This is controlling a cutoff on a filter, just a simple low pass filter, and I've sent an attenuated version, so I'm splitting this signal two ways into a quantizer to control my oscillator's pitch. Let's trigger the sample. Nice kind of chaotic CV like behavior. Now I'm going to hit loop, set this to loop, and just trigger the sound again. And the first and most obvious thing is to change the speed. We could go and change that loop behavior so it loops forwards and backwards. Or really slow it down. Playing this back at its normal speed, which is 50. I'm going to actually change the bit depth and really start to mangle this CV. Take note of what the pitch is doing here. We can hear and see these steps because we bit reduced the potential CV there. these back like one shots and have a decay envelope over them. I'm going to give this a shorter envelope. Let's make it a lot faster. And just one shot it. Slightly longer decay. Of course, we could go in and play with the Q points on this CV as well. So setting this to loop again, having the envelope up full. We can go in and play with these cues. Let's pull that end back. Let's find another part that we like. Move the start point. Move the loop point. Just re-trigger that behaviour. And notice we're in a nice little tight loop point there, but we get this. Just change the settings on the scope there. And then we hit this interesting loop. So it's a really powerful way to play around with mangling CV.
So here's what was literally my first patch with the squid salon pull, however you want to say it. Pamela's new workout's in charge here, taking advantage of the Volt Proactive on one of the parts, taking these different mix outs for kick snare, ride and hi-hat, different percussion and different effects. And I'll just run you down each channel. Here's out one and two, kick and snare, which is going through some rather over the top and noisy pumping compression. It's the ZVEX Lo-Fi Junkie if you're curious. Hats and Ride, going through a VCA with a kind of fake sidechain setup. It's a crush delay in there as well. Just noisy pumping vibe. And then here's this kind of clicky tom percussion sound, using the Vault Proctive in it just with a gate pattern to kind of mangle it. Nice whoop, sucky sounds as the gates kind of pull that around. That's straight into the mixer. And then a mix of this bass hit that I've tuned and this woodblock like sound into the herb verb. This is in stereo, as will most of the video be in stereo. Get some headphones on and let's just have a really quick jam around. There we have it, Squid Sample, Salilolample. I'm gonna go make a track with this. It's wicked. So here we're gonna run through some really handy key combos. Now key combos, shift buttons, they seem daunting, but it is super quick. For example, muting, we simply hold function and envelope from any of the channels. Channel one here is a kick. Super simple. If you want to change a parameter, let's say the speed of that hi-hat. We want to quickly move to that parameter on another sound. If we hold channel and scroll across, this is now the snare. Again, I could go over to the kick. And it just, it's a little workflow thing. It just speeds things up. If you want to change the same parameter to the same value on every channel, we hold function and channel and then move the program knob. And another cool little key combo is that if you want to reference and play back another channel through another channel, kind of take its settings and its sounds, simply holding channel and moving the program knob. We can see the little icon shows us which channel we're referencing there. It's almost nice just to audition the sound without having extra triggers and moving across those channels physically. When you're back to your normal channel, that disappears. Another one is hitting function and record. Passes this through to output eight, which of course comes through the mix output. If I was just coming out of eight. So of course that's great for auditioning sounds, which is its intention, but if you were hard strapped for a mixer, you could balance it on the level input, which will take line level or modular level and just get a little pass through going on. There are other key combos in the manual, which are great. They might be perfect for your workflow. Some of them you might not need, but of course, go check the manual. It's all really well laid out. So here we'll take a look at choking. You can hear I have a kick on one, snare on two, closed high on three, open high on four. And of course you can be way more creative choking out different samples or CV samples, be those audio or CV. But here we're just gonna do it with the hi-hats, classic hi-hat choking. Let's first mute channel one, channel two. 
And then we go to the channel that we want to choke the other thing, not the one that gets choked. Hope that makes sense. So I want my close hi-hat to choke and close off my open hi-hat. I hold channel and envelope, and then I twist the program knob. And then we have the little icon with the C and the number, that's the channel number that this will choke out. Bringing the other sounds back in. And if I take that off, or assign it to another number, can hear that difference and as I said be creative choke out more interesting or different or more unique samples than just the hi-hats but that's of course the classic example and I thought the easiest way to get this across so here we'll look at assigning CVs and like everything on the squid salad lampel as I'm calling it, it's relatively simple. I think it's really easy to implement. So here's my sound. I'm on channel six. First, I'm gonna loop it. Let's loop back and forth, why not? We've of course got pitch control and volt per octave right on channel six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna leave it just tuned down, this grungy field recording. And let's say I want to modulate, I don't know, level with an LFO. LFO in, this is the green trace on data. In fact, if I stop the other signal, you'll just see the green trace moving. This is what we're gonna use. Go envelope, level. But first, I'm gonna hit function and assign. And this lets us control this CV behavior. We can simply attenuate and also offset that CV. And it's as simple as being on the setting you want to assign something to and hitting assign. CV comes up, there currently isn't anything because I attenuated it, so holding function, hit assign. And we can see our CV. Now we can assign this to multiple things, say I wanted to control bitrate, hit assign. You can hear it's remembered level, I could keep going. Going back to level, turning that off. And here we're just modulating the sample rate. Function and assign lets me set up that behavior again, the attenuation and offset. Slow this down. Quite like that slower LFO. Let's do the same again. Let's have something else control the level here. So CV into this, blue trace on data, my other LFO. I'm first going to hit function and assign to get into the attenuation and offset. I want to get this down nice and low because I don't want the behavior to jump up. I don't want to assign something to level and it just full pelt kind of whack me in the face. So let's just add a little bit of attenuation there. Level, hit assign. And that's it. You simply find what you want to assign to. You hit assign, job done. You hit function and assign if you want to control the attenuation and offset of that thing. So here we're gonna set up accents and we're gonna use the CV assigned to control level to do that. This is the 808 kick, bass drum on channel one, muting channel three there for a second, and that's the hi-hat, super simple. Now here's a gate pattern that I want to use as an accent. You can see the LED coming on when it's active, so it's gonna make it nice and visual for us. And I simply go to what I wanna control, which is level on this channel, hit assign, Job done. Now hitting function and assign, we can scale the attenuation and the offset. So let's bring the attenuation right down, effectively turning this off. 
and then the offset you could hear I had a little bit already this is going to set our bass level really quiet the attenuation then we could try and accent the accent by having this control more things let's say speed pitch So here we'll look at recording a sound. Now first I would suggest saving a copy of what's on the USB stick for those default banks because it does overwrite the sounds in that bank and there's no undo. Here we've got a sound coming in. First we can audition and live monitor that sound by hitting function and record. And we can see that monitoring is active. So as I externally trigger the sound coming in here, we'll just hear it pass through. And this passes through to output eight, but I'm coming out of the mix out, so we'll just hear it from there. Complex oscillator into some spring reverb. Hit record to arm. I can see that signal on this audition. I know the level's good. Hit record. That stopped and there's a sound i can simply go into the cue points move that start position then of course play around with all the other parameters as well now let's do this live like live sampling on the fly while the beat plays and do it by triggering the record rather than me just hitting it Now live in time sampling really couldn't be any simpler. I've hit function and record so I can audition this sound coming through and I can live trigger the input external to the module just so we can hear it and it's this sound. Bit of a crunchy kind of Tom like sound. Simple enough. Now I've taken the trigger out to trigger this drum voice because what will happen is when I activate recording, it will trigger the sound. Super handy. So if you look on Pamela's workout and the expander, times one of my clock is the kick, times four is the hi-hat. This just proves how quick it is and doing it in context of a beat. However, it's a really simple one. I'm gonna take this divide by four output, so a trigger at the start of the bar into record. As soon as that fires, it's gonna send a trigger out, trigger my external sound, and it's captured. And because this is just keeping playing, it would keep doing it. So there we go, sampled. It sampled again. And it sampled again. I can take it out. It's going to keep doing it. And now when I take this trigger out, I can even take that sound out and I just trigger. Let's turn monitoring off. That sounds there and it's just in time. I don't even have to change the cue point. It's just there. Job done. Super simple. Now I can do whatever I want to that Tom sound. It's overwritten what's in that bank. What a simple, easy way to just capture a sound, bring an external drum hit in, in this case, live and on the fly. So here we're going to record CV, some complex modulated, wobbly, intermodulating, feedbacking, function generators and random source. Now I have my input coming in, I'm coming out of 8 because these main outputs are DC coupled, the mix output isn't, and I can monitor the sound coming through here even though I am recording into channel 6, so I'll move this output when I come to trigger the sample shortly. Function and record lets the kind of audition through, the monitoring through. We can see this complex source on the oscilloscope as well. Hit record to arm. I press it again. 
This is recording. I'm going to leave it recording for all 11 seconds. And that's record. So losing the sound. I'm going to turn the live audition off. Come out of six. Triggering my sample. And there it is. We can see the CV now on the scope. Let's up that level. Speed that up. I'm actually going to set this to loop. Play in reverse. And of course, we can go to town, assigning CV, mangling that CV, slowing it down, speeding it up, vault per octave over the CV sample. It's a really fun and interesting way to work with and capture complex voltage modulations. So here's just a really quick word on saving and loading banks. We've been live on the fly loading, hitting USB, scrolling through to a bank hit the encoder and loading as we've gone on through the video. Now we can make parameter changes, do the same and save it, clicking on the bank and hit save. We can also load single samples rather than loading or saving a whole set. Just looking at single channels and samples, hitting that asks us which of the samples from that bank we want to load. We can come back out and we can also save and do the same thing. We can rename files from here as well. So I just wanted to mention it. I mean, read the manual, but it really is quite simple. And just that you can load, save on the fly, save over settings. If you've got different start and end cue points and you save it, it will clip that sample in. You will overwrite the data on the USB sticks. If you want to dump it, save it on a computer, do so. I have. If you try and load a WAV file that's too long, it will get clipped at the maximum sample length. That recording is disabled while a USB screen is active and that the WAV files themselves saved on the sampler have squid sample specific metadata included for those samples as well. So here we're looking at how to create a kind of poor man's delay. This single trigger gives us these echoing like repeats. And let's take it back to just a normal sound and I'll walk you through the patch. So here's the normal sound. The first thing we want to do is turn loop on. Now this will just loop. Indefinitely. Reverse it. But with this looping, I'm going to the cue points, move the end point, and then what we want to do, get my trigger back in, and set the envelope to something other than full so it has some effect. So this is looping, but decaying away. Now if we play with those cue points for start, end and loop. I'm going to change the loop point, so it's almost like a pre-delay, we're going to push off of that initial transient. Nice poor man's delay, a kind of fake delay. So here we're going to look at cue sets, which is a really powerful way of getting more sounds into each individual channel in a bank and you can cycle through them. This is a mixed drum set, mixed bank of drum sounds with different cue sets. Now throughout this video, we have looked at cues, going in, changing start, end, loop points, but in function and cues, we actually have different saved cue points, cue sets as it were. 
This is currently being modulated under CV. You can take that off. And like anything else, you can go into Q sets, hit assign, and just assign one of those CV inputs to modulate through it. Now I'll reload this patch and kind of take us back to the base and walk through both Q sets and modulating them. So Bank 69, I haven't saved it. I'll just live reload it as this plays. So scanning through these, let's first just mute some of the sounds out and we'll go to the hi-hat. Function and cues takes us into cue sets and we can see by default this does have CV assigned. I'm going to remove that and I can just move through these cue points. We can have up to 32 Q sets, which is saved states of the start, end and loop points on the same channel. They can also overlap, and as we are, we can switch between them manually or with CV. As I said, we get into them pressing function and cues, rather than just cues on its own. Of course, pressing cues takes us back to actually be able to see the sample, and we could then modulate or change start, end and loop points. Once we're actually in this Q sets screen, we can select add. And just add and save a new one. And just hold function and click that program knob to remove a set. All this information is in the manual. I'm somewhat parroting this. So do feel free to go read the manual. As I've said in the video, it is a good manual. It's well worth a read. And I quite like that ride. So if nothing else, this is just a sample set that we can move through. Now let's change that hi-hat via CV. So function cues, one more time, I know I've said function cues a ton of times in this little section. I'm gonna plug in my CV, which is just a random step voltage on every beat of the bar. Every beat of the bar, just for reference, is this ride hit. Hit assign. And this isn't mixed in any way, I'm just taking the mix straight out. I'm not balancing this. But you can hear me modulating through it. So explore those cue sets and when you're recording sounds, do save different start and end points, recall them via CV. A great way to say CV or random modulate through a ton of different LFO waveforms or some weird random loop that you've made. So that's it for this video. That's cue sets, a ton of patch examples, lots of other stuff. I hope the video has taken you through everything you wanted to see from the squid salon pull. Hit like, subscribe, support the work that I do on patreon.com forward slash divkid. Speak to you all soon. See you next time. Cheers.